Who are the good Daedra? You're going to have to suspend your disbelief here and recognize that we aren't talking about the common interpretation of good. We aren't talking about anti-murder, anti-betrayal, anti-vanity type of good. Irrespective of whatever you personally believe, we can look at the multiplicity of different ethical codes and morals that inhabit societies all around the world and see that there is a large degree of relativity. Well, the same applies to the Dunmar, the Dark Elves of Morrowind, and their idea of what a good Daedra is. Welcome to Fudge Muppet, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott, and today I'm going to tell you all about the good Daedra, or as they are also known in the fourth era, the Reclamations. And I'm also going to try and explain why they are good, at least to the Dunmar. Let us first start with describing the Dunmeri faith and its gods, and then we will put it into context and see how it is that they believe these Daedra to be good. The origins of the title Good Daedra come from way back in the Morethic era on the Somerset Isles. As Eldmeri society there moved away from general ancestor worship and began focusing on a mere few powerful Aedric spirits, and as a society became increasingly concerned with greed and decadence, an old Mary man named Veloth sought another the way, a pure way of life. Veloth learnt a new way of living based on Daedric principles given to him from the princes Azura, Boethia, and Mephala. He showed them, with Mephala, the rules of Sijic endeavor. He taught them how to build houses and what items they needed to bury in the corners. He demonstrated the right way to wear their skin. He performed the way to walk to achieve an exodus. These teachings were inscribed by the prophet Veloth in the Velothi prophecies. They teach of the good Daedra who are Azura, Mephala, and Boethia, but they also teach of the bad Daedra known as the Four Corners of the House of Troubles, which includes Meirun's Dagon, Malakath, Molagbal, and Sheogorath. Yet it remains somewhat confusing as to how these three Daedra are considered good to the Dunmar and the Kaima before them. It's not as if Veloth was brought up with this perception. He was born and lived on the Somerset Isles surrounded by high elven culture and religious Aedra worship. Listen to the typical views of these so-called good Daedra. As known in the West, Mephala is the demon prince of murder, sex, and secrets. All of these themes contain subtle aspects and violent ones. Assassination, genocide, courtship, orgy, tact, poetic truths. Mephala is understood paradoxically to contain and integrate these contradictory themes. Mephala seems rather far from typical descriptions of a good deity. Boethia is a god of deceit and conspiracy, and the secret plots of murder, assassination, treason, and unlawful overthrow of authority. Not the traditional idea of good, either. Azura is potentially one of the only of these three that could be considered somewhat good by traditional thought. She is the Prince of Dawn and Dusk, and she has been shown to genuinely care for the well-being of her mortal subjects, as opposed to most others. However, she is not perfect. She is known for her vanity and egotism, one who lashes out when her love is forsaken. But if you continue in your reverence, it should not be a problem. Do remember, though, that she cursed an entire race, the Kaima with ash skin and red eyes because of the actions of their leaders. There is an element of vengefulness within her. One could argue that Morrowind's society is evidence of the immorality of the Daedra they worship. The Dunmar, after all, are notorious slavers, they have great houses with constant infighting and betrayals and jockeying for power, which is why there is a legal sanction for a cult of assassins called the Morag Tong to come about and murder people without legal repercussions. They are very xenophobic and structured as a society, though to be fair, it is not like there is not some stratification of society in all other lands of Tamriel, nor is it like xenophobic phobia is exclusive. One could point to the Nords, the Red Guards, or the High Elves. I think it's also fair to point out that the rise of the tribunal gods largely displaced the worship of the traditional good Daedra by claiming they were mere anticipations of the holy tribunal. As an Ashlander is more than happy to point out, the tribunal's Morrowind became decadent and civilized, moving away from the traditional teachings of Veloth. The Ashlanders were the only real relic of society that practiced as the Kaima originally did. Not that the Ashlanders are free from xenophobia or violence, but their life is far simpler and humbler, as well as rather harsh. It is a stoic and ascetic existence. 
But it is in clear contrast to a typical Adric-based morality. So why is it that the Kaima chose to follow these seemingly cruel Daedric princes? What was the main sell? I mean, they didn't have to abandon the Adric teachings and worship in order to go somewhere else in Tamriel. I mean, look at the Aelids who went to Cyrodiil. They still continued to worship the Aedra, as well as introducing Daedra later on. But the Kaima, the followers of Veloth, abandoned Aedra worship completely. Why is that? To understand this properly, we have to understand the fundamental problem for elven theology and mythology. Descriptions such as Anuic and Padamaic have been used to describe two fundamental differences in Nern's many faiths. Anuic-based theologies are centered around the idea that mortality and the creation of Mundus itself was a trick, a betrayal at the hands of Lorcan. This is commonly believed amongst most elven societies, and also this way of thinking is employed by the Redguards in their mythology with their dynamic of of Rutgar and Sep. Padamaic-based theologies generally have an idea that is favorable of the Lorcan figure, usually believing that the creation of Mundus was a willing act, with the Aedra in agreement with Lorcan. The Nordic version Shor, or the Cyrodiilic version Shazar, are both examples of this. As Veloth and his followers originated from Somerset, their initial beliefs would have been rather Anuic. So how is it that they end up with a favorable view of Mundus and mortality with a type of Padamaic belief? The root of all this can be explained in Boethius teaching to Veloth, and specifically the Sigic Endeavor. Listen to this section of the book, The Changed Ones. Of all the Etarda who wandered Nern, Trinimac was the strongest. He, for a very long time, fooled the Old Mary into thinking that tears were the best response to the Sundering. They cried and shamed our ancestors, especially the feminine Ultima. They even took the missing god's name in vain, calling his narratives into question. So one day, Boethia, Prince of Plots, precious youth, tricked Trinimac to go into his mouth. Boethia talked like Trinimac for a while then, and gathered enough people to listen to him. Boethia showed them the lies of the Et Arda, the Aedra, and told them Trinimac was the biggest liar of all, saying all this with Trinimac's voice. Boethia told the mass before him the triangled truth. He showed them, with Mephala, the rules of Sigic Endeavor. So what this passage is saying is that since Lorcan's grand plan for the creation of Mundus took place, many such as the Ultima believed they should essentially just cry about it and forever curse Lorcan's name, the missing god. Boethia seemingly defended Lorcan's honor by eating Trinimac and calling out his lies about Lorcan, and then he showed the mass of Velothi before him the supposed truth. Fundamental to Dunma philosophy is the Sigic Endeavor, which states ways to achieve apotheosis, to achieve Kim. The Sigic Endeavor Endeavor charges mortals with the test to transcend the very gods that created them. The Dunma philosophy sees Lorcan's mortal realm as a test to overcome, a challenge rather than an eternal prison to mope in. This is why Dunma would be considered Padamaic as opposed to Anuic. They have a favorable view of creation. Now, to beat this test, to truly conquer mortality via apotheosis instead of focusing on unraveling creation, they have to be a hardier people with hardier gods. There is no place for a god of peace and love, because these would only bring complacency and contentment with Mundus. They need to be driven to go above and beyond. So instead of thinking of good Daedra in terms of a typical morality, think of the term good Daedra in terms of how it will help them in their ultimate goal, the Sigic Endeavor. Hence, it is considered good. This also changes how the Dark Elves view suffering. Their perspective sees it as a moral good, a necessary element for growth, a growth that will push them beyond to transcendence. Think also of the House of Troubles, the Bad Daedra, or as they can also be named, the Testing Gods. These Daedric princes represent the manifested forms of their main challenges. Sheogorath tests their mind, probing the Dunma for mental weakness. Malakath tests the Dunma for physical weakness, unleashing hordes of orcs and beasts against them. Mayrun's Dagon has physically leveled the city of Mournhold before, and he also represents natural disasters and the inhospitable terrain of Morrowind. And Molag Bal seeks to corrupt and ruin the Dunmeri bloodlines to sully the purity, which would dilute their generations. This is where it became essential to venerate and worship the good Daedra in order to overcome these testing gods, as well as go beyond and transcend. Now, when you hear Mephala, teacher of secret arts, prince of murder, sex and secrets, 
You can see how these would be useful in overcoming the challenges of mortality, to murder your opponents, to allure them with seduction, to bear secret ways of doing things. Same goes for Boethia, deceit, conspiracy, secret plots of murder, assassination, treason, and unlawful overthrow of authority. All these aspects of Boethia ultimately speak of overthrowing a higher power. You could say that transcendence, rising above, and passing the other gods in power is a form of overthrowing, a form of treason per se. Azura here would be the closest to a feminine touch, closest to a type of love deity. While her essentialism to the trio is not clear by mere recital of her inherent aspects, but rather through her actions. Azura is a communal, uniting force for the Dunma, and when the tribunal gods arose and shifted the path of the Kaima, she changed their appearance and created the Nerevarine prophecy, ensuring that one day the pretender gods of the tribunal will fail and the Dunma would be set once again upon the true path the triangled truth, the Sigic endeavor. And so it did happen that the Nerevarine came and went, and the tribunal gods have gone. Red Mountain exploded, the Argonians invaded, and after thousands of years of civilization, decadence, and ease with the protection of living gods, the Dunma have now suffered a cataclysmic blow. This great lesson has set the Dunma back on their path. As a society that once scorned and antagonized the Ashlander tribes who remained faithful to the ways of the good Daedra, they now welcome and revere them as keepers of truth. Since the early fourth era, the good Daedra have once again become the focus of Morrowind's society. They are now referred to as the Reclamations, having reclaimed their rightful place from the false tribunal gods, who are now merely regarded as saints in an elegant compromise to reconcile the majority of tribunal loyalists and fanatics. So ultimately, it comes down to subjectivity and relativity. At the root of it all, the term good comes down to what is helpful or desirable in a society. Most societies seek the propagation of their culture, their religion, their ideals, whether that be equality, peace, conquest, piety, or others. It just so happens that in the case of the Dunma of Morrowind, that their ultimate goal is rather lofty and will require much sacrifice and hardship, which in turn will require some unconventional methods. But through this suffering, they will achieve true growth. For them, the ultimate good is to transcend the gods of creation and pass Lorcan's test. Hence the Daedra, who would guide them on the path to transcendence, would be considered good. This is why to truly understand another culture, you need to put aside your personal sense of morality so that you can truly get inside their mind and understand their values and their goals, while at the same time, you can disagree with them on a personal level. And in a world like Nern, where there are many gods, interpretations of gods, myths, legends, magic, and tomfoolery like dragon breaks, you really do have to keep an open mind in order to understand it without your brain breaking. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, that is how and why the good Daedra are considered good by the Dunmer of Morrowind. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed this explanation of the good Daedra, please do give it a like. It really does help us out a lot. We have received quite a few questions about a Reclamations lore video, but the good Daedra and the Reclamations are fundamentally intertwined. They're the same thing. And ultimately, the extent of the Reclamations lore is that the Tribunal are gone and we reverted to our ancient faith practiced by the Kaima. But there you have it, the Reclamations, aka the good Daedra explained. Do subscribe for more lore content like this, Thanks again, my name is Scott from Fudge Muppet, and I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.